Hello, I'm going to walk everybody through how I've been recording the Doom Eternal uh, 4K HDR videos. So first, uh, I should have shown B-roll in the previous thing, or now, um, of the capture card that I use, how I have it connected, how it's going across my living room to my HDR 4K TV. And now we're getting to the the fun computer side of things. So first thing we got to do is enable multiple displays so we could enable the capture card and the TV. And that'll blink. And we will eventually get a signal on this. I just got to adjust it. There you go. So the other monitor is showing up there. Let me just put Steam over there so we have something on that display. This will take a second. Just drag it over there. Get rid of that. Uh, and this is where I get confused because two monitors, and I'm not looking at the other one. So there we go. Uh, got that going. And we have to set, I like to set the resolution to what the game's resolution is, which is 2560 by 1440. And I manually pick the settings, but first we're going to apply it. It's going to blank. You're going to say yes. And uh, we have to use 422. I like to click apply before changing another part. All you have is limited output, which is fine. And then I change it to 10 bits uh, bit color. So now that display is set up almost all the way. We now have to change uh, in the recentral uh, Evermedia program. You have to change the decode format to P010, which allows HDR capture with metadata. Uh, you don't really have to do anything here because that's kind of just for the display. But when you're in HDR, it doesn't matter. Uh, you click OK. You change your recording quality to H.265, main 10, and resolution of 2560 by 1440, because anything higher than that is limited to 30 frames per second. You make sure the bit rate's on the highest thing, and you let that apply. And if you, you probably notice something here. So let, let's take a look again at the, at uh, the source setup here. So this is, this is where we're going to get confusing. Uh, I can't have that overlaying that. That's fine. Um, so I have that display set in 2560 by 1440. That's what it is. But because this is the USB 3, whatever capture card, 3.1, it's actually capturing the screen in 1920 by 1080 with 60 frames per second and HDR. The HDR is still there. But we're recording to 2560 by 1440, so we are upscaling it at a point. Um, it also works with, um, uh, if you have it in 4K, but once you compress it for YouTube, uh, no one's really going to notice the quality difference because it's kind of like using DSR where, you know, you're downscaling already high resolution things. So some textures and models end up actually looking better. But anyway, so um, you click HDR, which uh, it's not really showing the difference thing that ends up happening. So right now you see it looks all dim over here on that display. And you click HDR. It applies a tone map to it for um, the standard definition display that I'm actually playing, going to be playing the game on. Um, and that's critical. And it also enables a thing in um, the, the recording for proper metadata uh, to, to, to be embedded in the file. And um, my computer should be able to handle this. I'm going to click record on that. Even though I'm using OBS at the same time, but weird things might happen. So we're going to start up the game. We're going to get a tiny little bit of footage, not much. And I'm going to vape while this loads. Mm -hmm. 
barely needs to be on right now. So, um, you have the game set to 2560 by 1440. It's on monitor two. And we have triple buffering enabled. And also in the options for the capture card, there's an, another option for V-Sync. I don't know how it does that, but I enable it anyway, because I want my captures to be smooth and every frame to be unique. Um, and HDR is enabled. I could disable it. And just, I, don't know, I don't know if it looks different to you, but I'll click enable. And I'm looking at my TV across the room and I see the HDR, uh, HDR thing pop up and you could see how it was neutral looking or and then the then the tone mapping kicked in uh, for all the game settings you know, just pump it all the way up. This game is great um, just to make sure any weird things don't happen. I have resolution scaling on dynamic with a target FPS of 63. It usually never kicks in at 2560 by 1440, but who knows right now with um, the recording going on, two encoders at once and all that. Um, let's just pick, it doesn't matter. Well, it kind of does. Let's uh, let's just do Sentinel Prime because there's not that much going on there. I'm just going to capture the intro to this level. And right now I'm looking over at the TV. You could tell it's definitely HDR. I don't know if it you, the game's dynamic metadata or not, uh, but I don't think the capture is dynamic metadata. That gets really confusing, but then I don't think my workflow can support dynamic metadata, but I'm also not sure. So once all this gets captured, um, well, and, and um, also in ReCentral, I only have it set to capture desktop audio. And I usually have the volume at 75%, and then I pump down the capture volume to 90% because I noticed this game clips uh, the recording in ReCentral. So anyway, we got the uh, intro there recorded. We're going to exit to desktop. And we're going to go over here. We're going to stop the recording. We're going to go over here. We're going to turn off the other display. I'm going to say yes. We want to apply that. We can close that. We can close that. And I can go to and check the recording real quick. And if you look at the metadata, you can see it's in main 10, HDR 10 compatible. It's in the correct color space, which I will get into that. That's that's fun stuff. Um, and it's uh, also in, uh, yeah, the, the color space is this, but the, um, the gamma space, the HDR space, whatever you want to call it, the transfer is 2086, 2020, but it's actually 2080, but I'll get into it. The thing that matters is we have this right here, which records, um, the maximum brightness level, the minimum, uh, the the frame. You, you see what the things are. I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to say the things, um, but all that's good. If that's there, that's good. And we're going to open up Resolve. Going to open up my project for Doom Eternal, and I'm just going to make a quick bin. I'm not going to title it anything. Let's put the video in there. Let's make a timeline using that clip. And now we got the timeline. Um, I just like to make the, the thing small there. Um, and you're going to notice that the video looks here. Let's just get a frame of here. It looks really neutral. It looks like you just captured, you know, like a raw video with, um, a DSLR camera or a raw picture and you didn't do any color grading to it. And that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. So we're going to go to color. We're going to select the node over here, put it in HDR mode. And we're going to double check another thing here in my project settings. So the timeline resolution is in 4k. It's at 60 frames per second. The video monitoring is in 4k. 
Video bit depth is 10 bit. And if you go over to color management, we're in color managed mode. Input is 2020, 2084, uh, 1000 nit. Everything is that. HDR mastering is enabled at 1000 nits. And Dolby Vision is enabled at 1000 nits with the correct color space. Don't pick D65. That's not what you recorded in. That's not where you're working in. And you have uh, HDR 10 plus enabled. And if we, <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing because if I go into my history here, and that, that tips, um, well, there, DaVinci Resolve. There is a 3,200 page manual for DaVinci Resolve. And I'm not going to click search and then try to find the HDR section because that takes a very long time. But I've, I've read through all of this, well, all of the relevant parts for HDR workflow. And uh, it, it, it explains everything. Here, let's see if I could find it real quick here. HDR setup and grading. So it, it details basically everything you need to know about delivering the correct workflow for HDR um, video. So let's get back into making this look correct. First, I'm going to just cut the video a little bit. Let's get that frame where the cutscene ends. Cut that, get rid of that. Let's get where the cutscene cut starts here. So we just have this little section right here. And that's the cutscene for Sentinel Prime. Now, I like to do this stuff, disable things I know I'm not using. And this is like a weird, obsessive, compulsive thing with me where I, I don't trust things to actually be disabled if I don't disable them if they're not used. But anyway, let's go to a frame. Yeah, that frame looks good. Let's make, make big. And then uh, we're going to go to Dolby Vision, analyze all shots. It's going to analyze the clip for color grading. And I'm not actually sure, sure if I need to do this part for the delivery or if this is just for me on the standard uh, dynamic range display. But you'll see what happens. Boom. Look at that. This is how it should probably end up looking on an HDR display right here. Well, now that we've analyzed with Dolby Vision, I'm going to analyze with HDR10+, Plus, which again, I'm not really sure is a necessary part of the process, but I do it. I've been doing the same thing for every video, just out of ritual and habit, because I want them all to end up looking exactly the same. And that you won't see a difference in the preview window, which is completely fine. Um, and I kind of messed up something here. We have the soft clip setting right here. I like to turn that to zero and a hundred, just in case, because you see how, how, how it changes that. And you can see it in both previews. It's, it's, it clips it a little bit. Even at 50, I, I don't want any soft clipping, basically going on where it will possibly get rid of lows, get rid of highs, just in case we can see. Um, so when you do the Dolby Vision uh, analysis of um, a clip, I'm, what I'm guessing it does is it goes through the entire clip and tries to find a good um, set of values for the values down here, which are the min, the max and the average. Um, and I think that's, that's like the brightness values for, for in 10 bit color, basically. And let's see if that soft clip change did actually did anything. So those are the values there. Let's analyze it again. Max is 754 min is zero 303. 
is the average. It did change a little bit. The max is one bit lower, 752, 302. And that's not dynamic. As you go through the video, those values do not change, no matter if you have the tone mapping preview on or off or anything like that. Same thing with the HDR10 plus values. Those do not save per frame. And enabling tone map preview there, that's just a universal checkbox for both of those. So once I do that to, to um, a clip, a video, you have to deliver it. And the proper way to deliver one of these is going to H.265. And you have to use the NVIDIA encoder because that's the only thing that do it. And I use 300 mega, megabits per second. Maximum amount of keyframes, maximum amount of look ahead. And because in my project settings, I've already set 2020, 2084, 1000 nit. So, and I, I'll, I'll, well, for audio, I use li uh, linear PCM because go over here to the effects, multiband compressor. I just put a little um, audio treatment on the audio, just in case if it's a little too weak, because I want to get some of that range back. And then we add to the render queue, we render it. This shouldn't take long, that's a small little clip. And while it's rendering, it doesn't use the tone mapping preview because this is actually what you will, this, this is what it is, this is what you'll see. Unless the video player that you use locally applies a tone map, this is actually what the video looks like. And the reason for that is that HDR compatible displays read that metadata that's inside the, the file container and it applies, it applies it to the video for it to do the HDR business to the video. And YouTube also reads the, the, the metadata and works accordingly with it. So we have the exported video compared to the original recorded video. And there is a, there is a bit of difference in things um, on the recorded video. The, the maximum frame average light level and the maximum content light level are different. And the same thing with the mastering display luminance values. And not really sure why that is, except for the fact that, you know, it's gone through a step of encoding, transcoding, you know, editing. Um, but it's not the same exact HDR metadata as the original. I'm not really sure what difference that makes, if any, um, because I haven't actually uploaded an original video to YouTube to see what it does to it. But we're going to go through the whole thing here, and I'm going to upload that test video real quick. I'm just going to make it private. Save, close that, won't take that long to upload. And usually when I'm done editing the video and uh, that, that's already uploaded, I will go through and I will export the audio as a WAV file. And then I will export just the video using JPEG 2000 422 10-bit at 500 megabits per second. And that's what, that's what I use for archiving the videos. The video files end up bigger, but I've gone through and used a whole bunch of different uh, inter intermediary formats and found that this particular format seems to have the least amount of difference compared to the original. I don't care about how much space it takes up right now. 
that's completely fine. You know, the metadata is there for the video. And if I need the video to make a change to it in the future, then I have, I have that. And it's a good copy of it. And I keep all of my files nice and organized. I have, you know, episode one, got the thumbnail file, which I end up saving. Uh, I save it as a PNG, upload that to YouTube. And then to save space, I save it as a WebP because WebP ends up smaller. I have the audio wave file, simple. And then I have the video separately as, like I said, JPEG 2000 in a, in a, a QuickTime move container. And I have all those. I got my original uh, logo uh, GIMP project thing. I got, I got like the background. I got all that stuff. I got my little logo thing, but that's transparent, whatever. And yeah, it's uh, a pretty good workflow. Takes up a whole lot of space once you back everything up. 1.14 terabytes. That's pretty much that. The the next part is really just, you know, like taking that video. Like, let me let me open up uh, episode 11 here. Because I got the timeline set up here. So let's turn off the tone mapping preview. Uh, get like the first frame where Samuel Hayden says his dialogue right there. And that's what it looks like neutral. I know this is going through, you know, it's going through OBS and all that, but this is what it looks like neutral. And on that latest video, let's find that frame. Pause you. You could hit period and comma to go frame by frame in a YouTube video. Did you know that? Should almost be there. It's interesting going frame by frame with the camera transitions in this game because like the motion blur does weird stuff and then like the camera will zoom out real quick and yeah. So so there's that frame and for my display it's just it's just playing in 4K. You look at the stats for nerds it tone mapped it down to 709, which is correct for, you know, standard uh, dynamic range internet video. But if you were to play this on a display or a device that is HDR enabled, you would see that that is 2020, 2086, or 2084, one of those two, I forget right now. And then it's in correct HDR. But the cool thing is YouTube automatically takes care of the tone mapping and basically I kill two birds with one stone by having, by just uploading to YouTube the, you know, the highest quality 4k HDR video. And I'm able to serve people without HDR displays just fine. If you're watching this on, you know, a standard dynamic range monitor, it's fine because that's what I've edited the video on and played the game on. You know, when I was showing the recentral, that's how I play the game. I'm playing it in a little tiny window. So if I'm playing like crap, that's kind of why. Then there's just a little bit of latency, but it's not that bad. But you know, I am playing it in a little window and it's downscaled. So there's no shame in watching this in standard dynamic range because it is perfectly fine just like that. But if you do have an HDR display, I'd like to know how you, how it looks to you because HDR is like a really weird fucking thing. When you actually start reading into it, realizing how the spec works, all the different specs work. It's, it's a time. And the only reason I think it's worth it for me to do is because all of my previous videos that I've uploaded as series, which I've done a couple at this point, if I go back here, um, I started with a no commentary, deadly premonition playthrough. And big thing for that was being able to play it in play it and record it in 1080p. I recorded the game losslessly on my computer. Um, 
And then after that, I did Doom. I, well, I started to do the, the Division, but that didn't go anywhere. And then I did Doom. Let's see, what was that in? That was also in, that was in 1080p60. Also recorded losslessly. I remember that was, that was a whole lot of fun to record. But then I made a jump when I did Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein. I jumped to 4K. 4K30. Which you would think is bad, but... I don't know. I think the sharpness of the 4K uh, kind of uh, compensates for that. And I enjoyed recording that series. And I pretty much kind of stalled out for a bit. And then I did The Outer Worlds, which I still haven't finished. And that was recorded in 4K 60 using Shadow Play. Obviously not an HDR game. And my next evolution, obviously, you know, is, well, what's the next highest thing that I could do on YouTube? And that's 4K HDR. Even though, <laughs> you know, the, what I'm, the, the source video that I'm recording is scaled, you know, like I showed you in the media info. 2560 by 1440, but it, the capture card, because limitations of USB 3.1, it's only capturing, you know, in um, in 1080p. So it's a little soft. I think it's like a film softness, you know, like when you see a movie in a theater, it, it's, 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 it's not a bad scaling going on. There's like no weird artifacts. It's, it's soft. I like that. And that's that's the next evolution, basically. That that's that this is the highest thing that I could go for on YouTube right now is 4K HDR, and that serves two audiences at once because the tone mapping is able to do what it does. And I hope people enjoy it. I, I really just kind of do these things for me. If other people end up watching it, awesome. But it is mainly just, just for me, because I, I enjoy doing video stuff. I enjoy figuring these things out and being obsessive about quality that no one else is going to notice. If I had a better capture card, I would, I would be, well, I can't do this in, I would do it in native uh, 2560 by 1440. Uh, the graphics card I, cur I currently am using, 2070 Super. Can't quite do 4K. It will drop down in resolution scaling, and I think that might be a VRAM issue. And it doesn't matter what quality I use. But yeah, if I had a better capture card, I would be doing this uh, in a higher resolution natively, but still outputting the 4K. If you're making videos for YouTube and you could do it, output to 4K because things end up looking better. 1080p ends up looking like crap most of the time. There's compression artifacts everywhere, especially if it's, you know, a high movement game that you're doing or a game with a lot of dark scenes. You wanna you wanna pump up the the bit rate because people that watch, you know, on auto quality, if if their internet allows it, it'll go up to 4K and it'll look better. Even if they're not on a 4K display, it's just just use 4K. That should be what everyone's using. There's no artistic reason or you're recording retro games and you're playing in 720p for some reason. Upscale it to 4K. Try to find a nearest neighbor box filter integer scale way to make it 4K if it's a retro pixel game, but always output in 4K for YouTube. Give them a 4K video. You'll be glad you did, especially for the future. That's all the thoughts I got about recording these blood swamps. Um, yeah, see ya.